we're sitting here in Stoneman Meadow, here in Yosemite Valley. You know, there's grasses, some non-native, some native around us. It doesn't appear to be anything that's iconic, but yet it is. It is iconic. I mean, it's Yosemite Valley, set aside in 1864 by President Lincoln during the Civil War. What could be more iconic than that? A place that was set aside before Yellowstone was even heard of by non-native peoples. Yellowstone is the mother park, but even a mother had a mother. <laughs> Yellowstone it wouldn't have been possible had there not been a legal precedent. And the Yosemite Grant in 1864 is, was the act that made Yellowstone possible because it's very difficult to get things done in Congress if, there, if it hasn't happened before. And so with the passage of the Yosemite Grant in 1864, it opened the door that allowed people and the imagination to walk through and create national parks. So Yosemite made Yellowstone possible. When Yosemite Valley and the Mariposa Grove were set aside, the state of California was already in existence. There was already a governing body here who could manage its affairs. So some people consider Yosemite Valley and the Mariposa Grove to be the first state park in the United States. But the idea of its being set aside was always national in scope, was always national in intent. When I'm sitting here, there's more around me than what I can see because it's, it's so infused with this history. There's so much resonance to this environment, to this meadow. It's not just any meadow. It's a meadow in Yosemite Valley, and Yosemite Valley is not just any place. It's part of the whole evolution of the national park idea. And that's part of the DNA that's implicit to this place. So once again, it still comes back to this meadow. It still comes back to this place right here in Yosemite Valley that's more than just a meadow, surrounded by oak woodlands that are more than just oak trees and cliffs that are more than just granite. It's the stuff that dreams are made from. It's the stuff of an idea, the idea of national parks. That's what I'm sitting in the middle of. When you're hiking on a trail in the Sierra Nevada, because you're in a national park, whether it be Sequoia National Park or Yosemite National Park, in general, you're seeing much of what John Muir would have seen or what the Awanichi would have seen or the Paiute would have seen. And so one of the things that I, I find most powerful and most uh, magical about national parks is this, this way of recovering and experiencing what someone else must have experienced hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago. You can feel what they felt. If you're from Ohio, if you're from Detroit, if you're from LA, if you're from Chicago, you can see what John Wesley Powell saw. You can feel what John Muir felt when he was walking through a grove of giant sequoia. And that's the power of national parks. The geology in Yosemite is, is different from the geology of the Grand Canyon. In the Grand Canyon, you're looking at mostly sedimentary rock. But here in Yosemite, you're looking at granite. Granite is a plutonic igneous rock. You're looking at uh, something that's not volcanic, it's plutonic. It's something that actually was uplifted and then eroded away and reveals the granite that was underneath. But it's a different expression of the same story. It's still the story of the continent, but it's here it's a little bit of a different expression. Uh, even here in Yosemite, which is not renowned for its assemblage of wildlife, y you, when you see people along the edge of a meadow and there's a bear in the middle of the meadow, they're not thinking about the geology at that point. They're not thinking about granite. They're thinking about this, this living thing that they've only seen in the zoo or only seen in a movie. And there it is, right there, unfettered in front of them. And there's this excitement in the way that they're looking out into that meadow at that bear. Bears elicit excitement. Bears elicit astonishment. Wildlife has that effect on people's imagination. So you can't talk about wildlife without also talking about the Western National Parks. One is reflective of the other. People are drawn to wildlife in a way that they're not drawn to anything else because we see kinship. We feel this kinship with wildlife that we don't necessarily feel with rock, with granite, with rivers. But all of those things help support the living part of it. And the living part of it has that spark that draws and fires our imagination. Yosemite is special not because of one thing. Yosemite is special. It's, a, it's not, and special is not even the right, best word for it. Yosemite is unique because of the 
interconnectedness of so many wonderful things. If it was just the waterfalls, it'd be a great place. If it was just seeing a, a bear walking through stone and meadow at sunrise, it'd be a wonderful place. If it was just taking a rest from a walk early in the morning in the Mariposa Grove of Giant Sequoia, when right above you is the grizzly giant, just that alone would make it an incredible place. But when you have this combination of the giant sequoia and Yosemite Falls and Half Dome, El Capitan, the Merced River, all those things in combination create something that is greater than the sum of all the parts, of all the pieces. It's almost too much. It really is. It's over the top to be in this environment. It, it's off the charts. It, results in silence, being speechless, being so moved you can't even find the words to express what you're feeling.